Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel here. Hey, I have another Mavic 3 video for you today, but this video isn't so much about the Mavic 3 as it is about what we can do with it. Uh, the folks at Freewell sent me the uh, All Day 8 pack filter set for the Mavic 3, so uh, we're going to mess around with it a little bit, try a couple of things, and see if we can show you uh, what these filters can do for you. Uh, but in the meantime, let's uh, take them out of the box and take a look at them. So what do we get in the All Day 8 pack? Uh, we get an ND4 with a circular polarizer, uh, an ND8 with a polarizer, 16 with a polarizer, a 32 with a polarizer, a 64 with a polarizer, and then just a clear polarizer uh, lens cover and then uh, for really bright work where you want to show some interesting effects you've got a really dark ND1000 and an ND2000 so probably for 95 percent of your shooting situations uh, Freewell's got you covered with the All Day 8 pack let's open up the box so we've got the usual zip uh, opening at the top of the box here and that worked about like I expected. Okay, so there's two different jewel cases within the box. And as you can see, they're covered in plastic. Let me get that off real quick. So what we have in the first package is we've got the uh, ND1000 in the bottom uh, left there. ND2000 right next to that on the bottom. And then in the uh, top right, that's the clear circular polarizer. And right next to that is the uh, ND64 with a circular polarizer attached to it. So we have the uh, ND4 with polarizer, the ND8 with polarizer, ND16 with polarizer, and then uh, right here in the uh, bottom right, the uh, ND32 with polarizer. I suspect these are the ND filters that you'll use the most, uh, but uh, yeah, looks pretty good. And uh, let's take a look at how these fit on the drone itself. Okay, let's take a look at how you put your Freewell ND filter onto the drone's camera itself. So I've kind of got the uh, drone propped up against the Mavic 3 box here to hold it up so the camera can see it. But I'm going to take this little frame that's over the camera, I'm going to turn it counterclockwise and it simply lifts right off. And this frame does have glass in it. Previous uh, DJI drones, it just was a clear frame, uh, but this one does have glass in it. Okay, so then to install your uh, Freewell filter onto the drone, in this case the ND16, we're going to put the label where it says ND16 in the bottom left as we're facing the drone. Set the, len the lens on the camera. You can feel those tabs uh, go in and then you're just going to turn it clockwise. Pressing in as you turn it and it'll go right on. Hey, okay, there's one thing left to do, and that's to get the drone out in the field and uh, try out the uh, Freewell All Day 8 pack of filters. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out, and I have some ideas. It's kind of an overcast day today. We're in mid-December, so it's not ideal. In other words, uh, if we had really bright sunshine, we could t do a better job of testing out how that polarizer reduces reflection on water, etc. But we're going to give it a shot. And then also, I'm hoping that we can uh, get into a spot that we can show you how an ND filter can help you uh, induce motion blur into your video to make it look more natural. So uh, let's quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. Hey, I'm out at Kleiner Park in Meridian, and uh, we're going to take the Mavic 3. We're going to first fly it without a filter on it, and I'm going to go out over the pond out there, and I'm going to see if I can get up close to uh, the fountains. And with the drone just set in automatic, it should have a fast enough shutter speed that we won't see motion blur in the fountain. And then we're going to put uh, a, a, an ND filter on there and slow down the shutter speed. And I may even try and slow the shutter speed down uh, even more than the 180 degree rule and uh, so that we can see the, the, uh, the motion blur that an ND filter can provide and give you that more natural look in your video. So the other thing we're going to do is I also have the DJI uh, Mini 2 with me today. So we're going to put the Mini 2 up. I'm going to hover it, and then we're going to get the Mavic 3 above it. We're going to look down on it 
without a filter first and uh, it should, in theory, uh, stop the motion of the blades of the, uh, of the drone. We should be able to see the blades uh, as they're spinning around. And then we're going to put an ND filter on there and we're going to slow down that shutter speed and you're just going to get that blur in the blades. Hey, so one more thing before we get this bird in the air. It is a cold day today. It's about 38 degrees. Uh, so if you see me uh, kind of shivering a little bit, you'll know what's going on. There's a, there's a cold breeze as well. So there's just very few days we can get out and fly. This is just, you know, barely one of those days. So uh, anyway, let's quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. Okay, the drone is reporting ready to go. I've looked over the safety menu and uh, we're good on everything uh, with calibrations and so forth. Uh, I have uh, set it to uh, uh, 4K 24 frames per second. So uh, that means when we put the filter on, we're looking for about 50 frames per second, or excuse me, uh, a, a shutter speed of about uh, a 50th of a second. So, but we may even go lower than that to show that motion blur. Uh, so I got to tell you, my fingers are really cold. It is cold out here and there is a breeze blowing. Let's start recording now and let's quit messing around and. Uh, and let's get this bird in the air. We're going to do a takeoff on the app, auto takeoff. There we go. My fingers are so cold. I don't think the uh, screen is uh, is uh, is uh, responding normally. Sorry, I knew I could get that out. So I'm going straight up to about seven meters. I want to try and get that uh, that look for the uh, precision return to home. I'm not sure that is completely uh, up to date on the drone, but uh, in any case, uh, let's. Uh, boy, we got some sunshine coming out now, so I think we should uh, yaw around here and go right out over the pond out there, and you can see the uh, the. Uh, fountain off, off in the distance. So let's go out there and take a look. So there's the fountain and uh, boy we've got enough uh, uh, that we're showing some glare on the uh, on the water here too so hopefully that will continue and we'll have that when we put the ND filter on there and give that a try so but in any case let's move it forward and let's get down here uh, see how close we can get to the fountain here and uh, let me drop the gimbal down and oh we got a lot of waterfowl here so uh, <laughs> uh, let's hope we don't uh, disturb those guys and get anybody flying into the drone or anything uh, so anyway, that's one of the risks you take when you're making these videos. So there's the fountain right there, and that's the fountain. Uh, we'll just kind of do a little manual rotation around it here and, uh, and get you a look at that. And uh, maybe we can even get a little closer. I, I'm a little nervous with, uh, with all these birds here, but, uh, but let's try it. Whoa, boy, the drone really... Uh, <laughs> This drone descends really fast, and uh, it, you know I saw it going down there, and I was uh, I got a little nervous, uh, but we we have all of our a pass and everything on, so I think we should be okay. Although it is a reflective surface, but uh, let's see how close we can get here. And uh, and I can see uh, you know on the screen here the uh, you know I can see the individual drops and so forth. Uh, so, uh, so let's go ahead, I'm going to put it in cine mode and I'm going to see if I can do a rotation around and then, uh, boy, I'm overdoing it there. Sorry. My fingers are so cold. It is so hard to, uh, to do anything precision on a day like today. Let me tell you. So, uh, so we'll move around here and this, this, this will give us a lot of, uh, motion of the fountain. So, uh. Yeah, that's what we're looking for, and uh, boy, look at the uh, the the geese there. Uh, they're not even they're not even worried about us at all, are they? <laughs> uh, they're just floating in the water. Okay, so let's pick it up now, and let's uh, let's bring the drone back into us. 
Okay, so I've got the uh, Mavic 3 fired back up and we're going to go into manual settings here and uh, we are going to change our, uh, I've got an ND32, <laughs> I should have said at the beginning, on the drone and, uh, and we're going to see if we can uh, slow that shutter speed down a little bit here. So uh, let's go, uh, I want to go to ISO 100, whoops. ISO, sorry about that. My fingers are cold. Take it off auto. We're going to put it on ISO 100 here. And uh, then we are going to go to uh, shutter speed. And we are going to, uh, yeah, it's giving us about a 40th of a second shutter speed at ISO 100. So that's about right. Well, with that ND32, I wonder if we can... Uh, I wonder if we can slow it down even more. Let's go to a let's go to a thirtieth. Heck, let's try a twenty-fifth. I think that'll work. So we're going to put it on a twenty-fifth of a second. I'm still getting that vision system error. So I'm going to go back into the safety menu. Well, let's just click on it and see. No, that's not giving us anything. Let me see. So okay, that should be hovering long enough. Let's uh, let's go up and let's go back out over the. Uh, uh, the pond out there. I'm going to put it back in normal mode here. I had it in cinema mode. Get a little speed up and yaw around here. And folks, I'm telling you, it is cold this afternoon. And there's our pond. So uh, let's. Uh, and you can see the sun is out a little bit. So this should. This is good. This should help us. Uh, take a look at that polarizer as well, and I just had the polarizer set in the standard setting with the uh, with with uh, everything lined up. So I'm I am seeing some glare off the water here, but uh, but I don't uh, it, it, it I'm sure it's less than what it was uh, earlier. So let's get down and let's get close to the uh, the fountain here like we did before. I'm telling you, you know, you're, you're always a little reticent to, uh, and I'm going to go back into cine mode, and let's just rotate around the fountain here. I think we can get closer than that. Heck, I think I was closer than that before, so we're going to move closer. And I'm going to be very careful because we're seeing that, uh, that vision system error, and uh, so I, what I don't want to do is, you know, have the drone get confused and drop into the water or something so we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be ready on the sticks if we see anything odd but we're gonna we're rotating around here and uh, and what we should see on the video off the SD card is a nice amount of blur uh, in that uh, shooting at a 25th of a second in that water as it's uh, spouting up there. So I still, I think I can get a little lower. I'm nervous because I've got that uh, vision system error, but, but I want to get, I want to get as close as I can so that we can demonstrate this as best we can. And you see those birds flying around there. Boy, the last thing you would want is uh, is a bird to uh, to fly into the drone or something. So that's a little nerve wracking as well. But I think this is kind of a good example of how to show uh, motion blur in the video. So there we go. That's a good shot right there. We're kind of getting a complete 360 around this time. And I can see glare on the water. So, you know, in theory, what you could do is you could adjust that polarizer and reduce glare. Uh, you, you know, you just turn the ring on the polarizer to get glare reduced as much as you want. But and I'll let me put it back in normal mode here so we can get a little more speed. And uh, then I'm going to launch the, uh, the
the little uh, mini, or we might just put it on the on the pad. And actually, you know, we don't even really need to get it off the ground. If we can get it on the pad with the propeller spinning, we should be able to uh, demonstrate what we uh, what we want to show here. So there we are down there. Let's move over here so we're not over the top of those folks and uh, get right up back over the top of us here. That's me dropping the gimbal down. And let's bring this baby down. Boy, this drone comes down so fast. I'm telling you, it's un it, it just amazes me how fast this drone will descend. Okay, I'm going to let the drone hover there for a second while I get the, uh, the little Mini 2, get the props uh, spinning on it, and we'll see if we can get some pictures. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the little Mini 2 in a hover here right above the landing pad, so we're going to come straight down. I'm going to put it back into cine mode so we can slow down here. I thought about just leaving the, the little Mini on the pad, but... Uh, I want it to be continually, the props continually spinning. So I'm trying to center up right now over the pad so we can just get a look straight down on this guy. And yeah, this is working. Okay, so I can tell you that uh, with no filter, on the drone uh, on the uh, Mavic 3, I can't see those props spinning at all. So, uh, so I'm going to land the uh, the uh, the drone now, and uh, and we'll put uh, an ND filter on there, and we'll see if we can see some movement on the props on the little drone. Okay, so uh, I put an ND uh, 16 uh, filter on the. Uh, or excuse me. <laughs> And uh, we're going to see if we can get some motion blur in those props. So uh, firing up the, uh, the uh, starting recording now. So let's look down on the uh, on the little uh, mini two. Let's see if we can get over. I'm going to go back into cine mode. When you start it up, it always goes into normal. So let's see if we can get right over the top of it here. Go forward just a little and come down some. I'm getting a vision system error, so I presume. That is uh, with the uh, APAS system, so we're going to be careful here. But let's get down here, and we just should see a blur on those props. We shouldn't see uh, we shouldn't see any stop motion at all. So I'll be interested to look uh, without the filter on if we got some stop motion. Uh, but uh, but at this low. Uh, shutter speed, those props should just be a blur and we shouldn't be able to see them at all. Let me see if I can get a little bit lower. Yeah, so uh, that should be enough of a demonstration there. Let me, uh, let me pick the drone back up and I'm going to land the Mavic 3 and the Mini 2 uh, and I'm going to check and see if I can figure out what that vision system error is. I'm going to move it back over the uh, picnic table here and see if I can land that guy. I'm going to double check everything on the drone because uh, it gave me a little bit of warning to check the arms on the drone and so forth. So we are going to uh, see if I can land it here. I'm trying to get centered up on the table. Yeah, we got it here. Okay, let me get the Mini 2 landed.
you know, I got to say, the Mini 2 just did its job perfectly there. I had no mobile device hooked up to it because I just had it hovering a couple of feet off the ground. And it just hovered perfectly. It just stood there in place for, I don't know, several, several minutes. So pretty cool. Good job, DJI. We're going to go up in altitude. Uh, and I'm going to pick this guy up and uh, and bring it back to us. We uh, What I don't want is... Uh, uh, what I, I'm a little concerned with all the waterfowl here. Put the drone into return to home, and we're just going to do a little experiment here, and we're going to see. This has that uh, uh, intelligent return to home. I can't remember what DJI calls it, smart return to home, or, or anyway, but where it's supposed to come in a straight line, and uh, and we'll see. I'm going to lower the gimbal as we're coming back here, and let's see how close it gets to uh, to our landing pad here and we we messed around with the drone a lot so I'm definitely going to give it the benefit of the doubt uh, on this one and it's coming down from about 30 meters high uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna let it land this grass is pretty short oh, look at that it's it's zeroing in on the pad so looks like we got it I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna stand in front here yeah it picked up the camera there we go. Uh, yeah, it's going to hit the pad center on. So, yeah, it's kind of moving around there. Yeah, I'm going to click OK. And then as soon as I clicked OK, the drone, uh, the drone landed right on the pad. My theory that I had early on about the first few times that I flew this guy about precision landing not being active was clearly wrong because I, the last several flights, uh, it's landed right on the pad. So, yeah, it's just something fun to mess around with. Okay, here's the, uh, here's the Mavic 3, uh, so I'm going to go home and I want to look at the footage before we do the conclusion. Hey, okay, so this is the next day uh, after I filmed the video with the uh, Freewell all-day 8-pack ND filter set. And one of the things I noticed is that at one point there I got a vision system error uh, with the drone. I, this is the next day, I've got, I put that same filter back on the drone. And I'm going to try it out again and just see if that was just an anomaly or did it have anything to do with the filters. I don't think it did. Now, uh, I, I, was, I had the drone setting on a picnic table that had some dirt and stuff on it. So I suspect maybe I had uh, one of the, uh, uh, I just didn't have one of these uh, uh, obstacle avoidance cameras clean is what I think. Uh, but in any case, Let's just fire it up here real quick and give it a quick test. Okay, we're ready to go. I've started recording. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take off here and fly it around a little bit. And it's asking me to check propeller installation, uh, which it did the other day, too. I think that does that uh, every time you try and do a manual takeoff. So uh, that's kind of interesting, uh, interesting little uh, thing that they do there. So let's go ahead and pick the drone up. And yeah, we've got we've got no issues. So, like I said, I, I wondered if it was uh, something to do with uh, with yeah. And I'm seeing the drone here. It's already detecting this uh, this tree in front of us here. Yeah, and it's it's just going to fly right around it. Uh, so you know, all the obstacle avoidance and everything is working as it should. So. Uh, anyway, that was just a little. That was just a little check. Let's uh, let's just do one more one more little check here. Let's bring it back, and uh, facing into the sun here. Let's uh, let's bring it down. And boy, does this baby drop in altitude when you uh, when you come down. Let's get it behind my uh, truck here, and bring it in. Let's see if I can get it to a lower altitude, and. Uh, I'm going to bring it right on down. And that's, that was me. I'm going to go in cine mode here because I'm having a, I just was a little bit too uh, quick on the sticks there. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go down even further. And I bring it towards my truck and it should go right over the top and that will, uh, give us a good idea of how that vision system is working and it does I'm watching the drone rise over the top of it okay so let's do uh, it, it's right here let's do it let's see what happens if see if we can get a good return to home here 
I'm hitting return to home right now. And it's just simply, it knows it's close to its landing spot. So it's turning around, it's rising in altitude. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't give the drone a good look at its landing spot, so I don't expect a precision landing. But as you can see, it's gonna be pretty damn close. Uh, I like the way it does that, you know. It, uh, well, you know, it might be right on the pad here. Let me get out of the way. Now nah, it's a little off. So it's right in front of the pad. Okay, I just wanted to do that just to prove that whatever issue I had yesterday didn't have anything to do with the filters, and clearly it didn't. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Hey, okay, I just got back from the field uh, from flying the uh, Mavic 3 and, and trying out the uh, Freewell all-day 8-pack uh, ND filters. Uh, so one of the things I just noticed, I just uh, was messing around with the gimbal here and I accidentally unlocked it. You'll see the gimbal kind of uh, flopping around there a little bit. Let me show you how to lock it again. And this is what DJI told me to do. I, got, I contacted DJI about... How sometimes you'll find the drone with the gimbal unlocked. They just basically said to fire it up. So I'm just turning it on. And then we'll just shut it right down. And you'll see that gimbal lock. And I don't know if you could hear that, but uh, but that gimbal locked in place, and it's you know it's it you know you can see me moving it around here, uh, and it's locked now. Now, as with regard to the uh, what we did with the filters out in the field, so uh, I just went up and looked at the footage. What I was hoping to see when I did the shot over the top of the Mini Two, I was hoping that without the filter on, we would see more stop motion in the props. There might have been a little difference there, but it was pretty subtle. And I think that was my mistake. I think if I had gone into manual mode instead of leaving the drone in automatic uh, and, and uh, turned up to a really high shutter speed, I probably could have uh, stopped the props and seen some stop motion uh, there. And then it would have been a more dramatic difference with the filter on and the way the filter shows motion blur. But I'm gonna, I included that anyway, as you guys saw. Uh, but then I think what did show a pretty dramatic difference was when we went out over and, and did the kind of a semicircle around the fountain in the pond. Uh, with the drone in automatic settings, uh, you definitely could see individual water droplets and, and so forth on the fountain. And when we put the uh, filter on there, uh, in this case an ND32, it definitely uh, showed more motion blur, more natural look looking motion blur uh, in the fountain. So then with regard to the polarizer, I'll have to go back and look again. I didn't see a whole lot of difference, but the thing is you have to kind of adjust the polarizer too. So I had it just the, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on camera, the white the little white lines, I had those lined up. So I don't know if that was the perfect adjustment for the direction that I was coming in there. But what you can do with that polarizer is you definitely can reduce uh, that amount of glare that you get off water and glass and those kind of things. So I want to thank uh, Freewell for sending me the uh, All Day 8 Pack. Uh, pretty just neat little kit and it should help you uh, in any kind of a situation that you're in with your Mavic 3. So uh, again, uh, nothing but fun. Uh, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I really appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. The uh, Freewell All Day 8-Pack Filter Set. Pretty cool.